In this video, we're going to continue looking at our interface enhancements for Autodesk Inventor 2017. Here we're going to be looking at, inside of the modeling environment, some of the differences. So here I have the interface enhancements, IPT, open from our working files directory. On the left-hand side, we're going to bring focus to our model browser first. So you can see some small changes have occurred here. We basically no longer have a plus sign in front of our feature nodes. We now have a down arrow, which allows us to expand that out. Another change we have here is rather an enhancement. So if you go over here and do a soft double click, you can traditionally change the name of a feature. An enhancement now is if you do a single click and hit the F2 key on your keyboard, you can then rename your node there as well. Because some people have trouble getting that soft double click to work just right. Another enhancement we have to our model browser is a shortcut key that will allow us to toggle through different available options of our pull down of our model tree. Now here we just have model and favorites, which is content center favorites. You may not be going to that a lot inside of the modeling environment, but you might do it a lot more inside the assembly modeling environment. So if you want to switch to content center or representations inside of the IAMs, you can do that. This is a little bit more designed for Autodesk Vault users though. So Autodesk Vault is a check-in, check-out ownership software that allows you to control your data in a team. Now there's an extra model tree there you have inside that integration that gives you the ability to see all those different statuses of your file. So Autodesk Vault users will constantly go over there and toggle to the Vault tab in order to see these different ownership controls. So now we can do that much easier with a shortcut on our keyboard. We use Alt and A at the same time. And that'll toggle over to the next available panel. If you keep hitting Alt-A, it'll keep cycling through. It also has another shortcut which moves it backwards. So if I use Alt-A, it moves it forward, and Alt-S will move it backwards. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the other interface changes here inside the graphics window. On the right-hand side, you can see in the lower right, we have this little blue button, and this is actually a connected Design 360 button. Now we're gonna have a whole video just about this guy by itself, but in case you need to turn it off, I wanna talk a little bit about the add-in that gets created with this particular tool. So if you go up to your tab called Tools here and click on Add-ins, if you didn't want to use this connected 360 design, you can actually disable it. So you just click here and unload that from actually starting up with Autodesk Inventor. Now, the more add-ins you disable, the faster Inventor will start up next time you need to launch the software. So generally, if you don't use certain things, you can turn it off. Just remember that the functionality won't exist until you turn it back on. Now, why do I bring this up? Because if you wanna turn off this 360 integration, a lot of companies, large corporations, believe that you should stay off the cloud. So you might wanna turn off the 360 integrations if you don't want them. So I'll go ahead and say okay there. Close out of that. This next thing I'm going to do is not really an enhancement, but just what I normally do to my interface when I get a new version of the software, is I like to customize my navigation bar here on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna choose the little tiny arrow at the bottom called Customize. I'm gonna turn off steering wheels, pan, and zoom. Because my mouse does all that work for me, I don't really need a button that does it for me too. But I will turn on Projection and Visual Styles. Now, as far as Visual Styles go, there really isn't any new ones here in 2017. There was one added in 2016 called Technical Illustration, as you can see there, but nothing new in 2017. Now, the last thing we're gonna look at here is our environments and our lighting enhancements. So if we go to our View tab, we can see here on the two light pull down, we basically have all of our environments. Now, the first thing to point out about this is the enhancement that we now have different icons, which will tell us about our different types that we have here. So from cool light all the way down to warm light, those are environments, whereas one light and two light are just lighting styles. So that's our difference in the icon. We have a light bulb compared to a sun. Now I'm gonna click on settings here, and this will launch me in there and allow me to look at what I have. You can see on two lights, I currently have a little computer icon next to the light bulb. Now what that means is that lighting style is currently active and currently cached inside of my file. So if I go up and double click on one light, you can see now that one's cached with that little computer icon. If I click on warm light, you can see now that one is cached. You can see it keeps adding these into the file as I double click on them. Now, 
That icon might change if I come into warm light and actually turn on some lights inside of it. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. So now I have a warm light blended environment there. You can see I have different tabs here. I have environment, lighting, and shadows. Whereas on the one light, we have just lighting and shadows available. So getting back to these icons over here, you can see if I switch over to Tranquility Blue, it does load that one to memory as well. But notice that the icon here doesn't really change if I have the blended environment or if I have a strictly environment for lighting by itself. Now let's take a look at actually what's happening inside of each one of these styles. So here on Warm Light, you can see I have the control for the different shadows. This is broken out from where it used to be inside of 2016 and earlier. I can have my lighting direction be based on the environment or some of these other different settings, like for the lights, if I have those turned on. I can then adjust my density, softness, and ambient shadows. On my lighting tab, you can see I turned on light one and light two. I can control the color, the brightness, the relative movement. I can control the brightness and ambience of all the lights if I just want to control all of them and not have to adjust each one as well. And on environment, I can control whether or not I see the display of the screen image and actually is showing up behind my window right now. I can control the exposure and rotation and scale as well. Now, some of these actually have an environment image to them. So this one has this display image here. It's really vague. But if I go to something like Old Warehouse, I'm not going to save the edits here. You can see it has more of a Old Warehouse sort of image to it. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. And now if I go in here and change some of these to like Old Warehouse, it loads up this IBL environment. Let me zoom out and you can then see the old warehouse. Now this is a pretty small file, so I might need to change my sizing depending on what I'm trying to place this into. But we basically have just a new icon there. And also how we segregate it out with our settings is really the enhancements that we have. So just a little bit of a tip here before we finish up this video. If you want to control the orientation, there's a little message here that lets you know about the ground plane and the orientation of this. If you were to change your top view on your view cube, it basically changes the orientation of the scene that you're in. So by changing that to the top view, you can see the part is oriented a little bit differently sitting inside the warehouse. So this has been a look at our interface enhancements inside of Autodesk Inventor 2017.